Dick Rauscher here. Welcome back to the Stony Hill Nuggets blog. Today we're going to be talking about Stony Hill Nugget number 268, the power of black and white uh, rigid beliefs in their ability to harm relationships. Let me start uh, this, this article uh, begins with a story and this is a true story by the way. Uh, we're at a kind of a dinner party, uh, fairly high end. It was a nice, a nice evening, a little formal, but um, we were having a conversation. And typical of conversations when a bunch of people don't know each other real well get together, everybody's kind of searching for something to talk about, right? Well, we had one person in the group who very innocently made a political comment. And it wasn't even that outrageous or that... Um, uh, you know, rigid uh, uh, philosophy. He just put out an idea, about his thought about politics. And of course, in the 2016 elections, that's probably not a really good dinner conversation to bring up, but he did. At any rate, uh, immediately, there was kind of a, a, a silence around the table. Everything went kind of quiet for a minute. And then one of the other people at the table said, you know, that's ridiculous. How could anybody be so stupid to think that way? And he went off on a rant. Okay? Well, when he got done, what he had done is trigger two or three other people who decided that they were going to weigh in on this conversation. And everybody had a different rigid belief about the subject that this first person had very innocently introduced into the conversation. Okay, And the thing that was important about this, um, and I'm sharing this story because after about the third or fourth person, um, this whole dinner party got very, very uncomfortable. And the host stood up, hostess stood up and said, uh, I think our evening is over and began picking up, you know, plates and dishes and beginning to take them into the kitchen and everybody was kind of self-conscious and the party broke up. Uh, long story short, we've never gotten back together again, okay? And that was a good many months ago. any rate, what's important about this dinner party uh, story is that we could have been talking about politics, we could have been talking about religion, how to raise children, the economy, immigration, Wall Street, uh, the stock market. I don't care what we would have, any subject that had been brought up. The choices were almost infinite, okay? The problem wasn't the guy bringing up the, uh, the comment about politics. It was the fact that everybody jumped on board with their own relig uh, rigid beliefs. And those rigid beliefs left no room for conversation. It just shut down the evening, okay? And, of course, everybody, went, uh, the emotion level went pretty high and people started getting angry, etc. And that's why the hostess closed down the evening. So, this article is about the power of rigid beliefs to shut down relationships. So, let's take a look. We got two people, two extremes. And first person is kind of unconscious, uh, working out of their primitive ego, their need to be right. And their beliefs are kind of ideologically rigid, okay? So when the person at the party talked about politics, it hit their beliefs of this person A, and his comment was, that's ridiculous, and off he went on his rant, okay? It was totally unconscious. In other words, he really had no control over that response. It was an unconscious reaction, or what I call a knee-jerk response, and I'm sure you've seen this in, in people. Um, it's totally unconscious, but it's based on their need to be right. So no matter what you say, they have to jump in, and they tend to be a little critical, pretty, pretty black and white in their thinking, and it typically kind of shuts down um, conversation, and that's what happened at the dinner party. Now, if we have person B 
And person B now is going to be quite different. Person B gets the same stimulus, same comment about politics at the dinner party, only they're awake, they're self-aware, and they are empty of ego beliefs. Now, that doesn't mean they don't have beliefs. They probably do. But they're smart enough and awake enough to recognize that they don't have absolute truth. The only thing they could possibly do is put in a subjective opinion that is their own personal opinion. But typically this person, their reaction is to begin searching for the values and the truths on both sides. So in other words, they're exercising choice. This person was a knee-jerk, totally unconscious, boom, it's right out there. This person was thoughtful and said, well... Let's take a look and see. You know, that's interesting that you say that. And then they began to look for, value, for the values and the truth on both sides of the issue. Okay, If all of the people in that dinner party had been uh, this person, person B, it probably would have resulted in a pretty interesting conversation around the dinner table. A lot of thoughts going around, people sharing their ideas and, and concepts, etc. And it probably could have been a very interesting evening. Uh, kind of fun conversation. Obviously it didn't in this particular case because we had too many A persons there and everything kind of went downhill. So basically what I'm trying to point out here is in terms of relationships, a conscious person has a choice. They're empty of ego. The unconscious person is a knee-jerk. So the way I like to, to describe this is that all these beliefs are like copper, okay? They're totally conductive. The stimulus comes in and immediately you got high conductivity out here to the unconscious. It's instantaneous. And when that happens, the, the stimulus goes immediately into, into a need to be right knee jerk. Down here, if you have a conscious choice, then there's no conductivity here. In other words, this is empty space. So the stimulus comes in, this is the comment about the um, uh, politics, comes in, but it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't get conducted out immediately to a reaction or a response. It kind of gets stuck in there, and the person says, hmm, maybe I, we could talk about the values and the truths on both sides. And that's what they begin to do. So I like this philosophy that your beliefs are co conductive. They're like copper. So no matter what the input, you're going to get an immediate output. Over here, it's an empty ego, stimulus input, no immediate reaction. It's more thoughtful. So here, another way to think about this in terms of harming relationships is that if the person B is exercising the choice, then what, it, what they're doing um, is that they're showing what they believe through their actions. In other words, they're thoughtful, they're compassionate, they're non-judgmental, they really think about what's going on here they're looking for truth and values. So they're showing everyone at the table who they are. This person is telling them through their beliefs, coming out of their childhood primitive ego, and they're telling them who they are. And it's almost always done in the imperative voice of absolute truth. This is the truth, okay? And we're not going to discuss it because you're wrong, that concept. So you can recognize that this kind of response is going to be very harmful to relationships, whether they're strangers or whether they're family or neighbors or anyone else, uh, co-workers. When you start speaking in the imperative voice of absolute truth and your beliefs are kind of ideologically rigid, you're probably going to struggle with a lot of unhappiness in your life because your relationships are going to be pretty stressed. They're going to be um, probably fairly few, <laughs> frankly. Okay, so it's again, what I'm offering here is a way to think about 
how we respond when someone else gives us uh, some input, when there's a, a, a response. Another one, for example, I didn't put this in the article, but it's one that I like, is somebody cuts you off in traffic. What response are you going to have? Are you going to be person A? Because that's probably going to lead to road rage. Or you could be person B and say, well, they're probably having a bad day or maybe that's the only way they could be powerful today. Maybe they're feeling powerless. Uh, so you just kind of think about it and you look for maybe what other options might be available other than road rage. Okay. So this concept has some pretty powerful day-to-day -day impact. If we can embrace this idea of empty ego, um, you'll find that your relationships are a lot more uh, compassionate and a lot more loving, and people won't be afraid to share their thoughts and be vulnerable with you. Okay? All right, I hope this concept is helpful. It's kind of a model for thinking about how we respond in the world. Um, and I hope it uh, is helpful for you. Okay? Have a good week. We'll see you down the road.